Our first stop takes us to ancient Athens, the cradle of democracy and a cultural and imperial powerhouse of the 5th century BCE. Here, perched atop the Acropolis, the Parthenon stands as a timeless symbol of Athenian power and artistic achievement. Commissioned by Pericles in 447 BCE, the Parthenon was more than just a temple dedicated to Athena, the city's patron goddess. It was a treasury for allied war tribute, a symbol of Athenian pride, and a testament to their victory over the Persian Empire. Built during the Golden Age of Athens, the 5th century, the Parthenon is rightly seen as a symbol of a civilization at its zenith. The Parthenon's construction was a remarkable feat, orchestrated by a diverse group of skilled artisans and laborers overseen by a board of five annually appointed citizens called the Epistatae. These commissioners, though not necessarily experts in construction, were entrusted with overseeing the project's finances and progress, ensuring that the materials arrived on time, prices were fair, and enough men were employed to keep the work moving along smoothly. Their meticulous records inscribed on stone offer us a glimpse into the project's financial aspects and the sequence of construction phases. These inscriptions, known as the Parthenon Accounts, even provide details like payments to quarrymen, carters, and craftsmen, shedding light on the economic side of this monumental undertaking. The builders meticulously crafted each marble block, ensuring a perfect fit without the use of mortar. The temple's subtle curves and optical illusions, called entesis, designed to counteract visual distortions, demonstrate the sophistication of ancient Greek engineering. The project also involved a massive logistical effort, with quarrymen, carters, and masons working in concert to extract, transport, and shape the enormous marble blocks that they were working with. This collaborative effort, spanning over 15 years, likely involved over 1,000 individuals, surely driven not only by wages, but also by patriotism and a sense of shared purpose. The Parthenon peristyle showcased the Doric order in its most refined form, boasting exceptional proportions and intricate details. The structure measured approximately 70 by 31 meters on its top step, with eight columns at each end and 17 on the sides. The temple was constructed using fine marble from the nearby quarries of Mount Penteli, while other elements of its construction came from far-flung outposts of the Athenian imperial project. The name Parthenos translates to virgin and symbolizes Athena's status as polius or protector of the city. The Parthenon's elaborate sculpture was unified in theme and closely related to the goddess Athena's cult. The metopes, continuous frieze, and pediments all contributed to the temple's grandeur. The metopes depicted mythical battles such as the Lapiths against the centaurs, the gods against the giants, and the Greeks against the Amazons. The pediments displayed Athena's birth from Zeus's head in the east and the contest between Poseidon and Athena for Attica in the west. Over time, the Parthenon underwent transformations. It was converted into a church dedicated to the Virgin Mary under Byzantine rule, and later into a mosque during Ottoman rule. The temple remained largely intact until 1687, when a Turkish powder magazine within its confines exploded due to the Venetian bombardment. This caused significant damage, especially on the south side of the temple. Now, the effect of the Parthenon on a visitor today must be similar to the effect on its Athenian builders, proud democratic citizens overseeing the symbol of an empire. Its sturdy columns, clean lines, and harmonious proportions create a sense of balance, strength, and serenity. Erected by the Emperor Hadrian during the years 118 to 125 CE, the Pantheon has stood intact for almost 2,000 years, one of the most magnificent architectural monuments of antiquity. Its domed interior, known as the Rotunda, still blows people's minds today, and it's not just because of its size. For the CNET building's construction in Paris in 1958, the dome held the record for the largest concrete span but actually it's the captivating interplay of light, sound, and color within the dome that really does ignite our imagination. The current building, which was converted to a church in 608 CE, St. Mary of the Martyrs, is actually the third pantheon on the site. The first, built by the general Marcus Agrippus in 2725 BCE, was destroyed in the Great Fire of 80 CE. Replaced by Domitian, it was then struck by lightning in 110 and burned again. Hadrian, true to his normal practice, chose not to dedicate the building in his own name, but rather in the name of the original dedicant. Thus, the famous inscription on the front, Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, built this in his third consulship. 
The Pantheon's dome, an architectural marvel, showcases the remarkable properties of Roman concrete. This innovative material, a mixture of lime, mortar, volcanic ash, pozzolana, and aggregate, offered impressive compressive strength, allowing for the creation of vast open spaces. However, it's been suggested recently that Roman concrete wasn't quite as resistant to tensile forces, that is, stretching forces pulling apart material, as once believed. To get inside the Pantheon, you had to walk through this long rectangular forecourt leading to a traditional octostyle Corinthian portico. Red and gray granite columns measuring almost 12 meters high formed this portico, but there's actually evidence that the original plan called for even taller columns, which is amazing. After the porch, there was a rectangular block that connected to the round main room, which was symmetrical, almost 44 meters in both diameter and height. Natural light poured in through a massive hole in the ceiling called an oculus, which was 9 meters wide. The dome was supported by a thick cylindrical wall made of brick-faced concrete that was 6.2 meters thick. This wall wasn't just a solid mass, though. It was cleverly designed with internal voids and relieving arches to reduce its weight and manage the immense forces at play. The dome itself, with its stepped rings and coffered ceiling, is a testament to Roman ingenuity. These features, once thought to be purely structural, now seem to serve a dual purpose. The coffering, with its beautiful geometric patterns, significantly lightened the dome's weight. The stepped rings, while contributing to the dome's stability, also reflect the Romans' deep understanding of the construction of arches and vaults, techniques that they mastered long before the Pantheon's construction. It's these skills allied to the tensile strength of concrete that makes the rotunda so amazing. It's even been suggested that these rings, possibly incorporated from the outset of construction, help to stabilize a dome inherently prone to cracking due to the tensile limitations of Roman concrete, as good as it was. The presence of cracks in the dome further supports this idea, showcasing how the Romans recognized the limitations of their materials and designed accordingly. It's also possible that the stepped profile of the rings might also be the result of a Roman construction method of building in horizontal lifts, showcasing practicality alongside structural ingenuity. The Pantheon's interior, adorned with richly colored marble and illuminated by the oculus, is a breathtaking sight. It speaks to the Romans' ambition, engineering prowess, and their desire to create awe-inspiring spaces dedicated to the gods. It's a testament to the fact that even with the limitations of their materials, the Romans were able to achieve architectural feats that continue to inspire wonder and awe centuries later. All right, guys, that's it. So much more to say about this topic. We're going to leave it here for right now. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please do like and subscribe. It would help me out very much. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you very much.